Old Behrman was a painter who lived on the ground floor of the apartment building. Behrman was a failure in art. For years he had always been planning to paint a work of art, but had never yet begun it. He earned a little money by serving as a model to artists who could not pay for a professional model. He was a fierce little old man who protected the two young women in the studio apartment above him. Sue found Behrman in his room. In one area was a blank canvas that had been waiting twenty-five years for the first line of paint. Sue told him about Johnsy and how she feared that her friend would float away like a leaf. Old Behrman was angered at such an idea. Are there people in the world with the foolishness to die because leaves drop off a vine? Why do you let that silly business come in her brain? She is very sick and weak, said Sue, and the disease has left her mind full of strange ideas. This is not any place in which one so good as Miss Johnsy shall lie sick, yelled Behrman. Some day I will paint a masterpiece, and we shall all go away. Johnsy was sleeping when they went upstairs. Sue pulled the shade down to cover the window. She and Behrman went into the other room. They looked out a window fearfully at the ivy vine. Then they looked at each other without speaking. A cold rain was falling, mixed with snow. Behrman sat and posed as the miner. The next morning, Sue awoke after an hour's sleep. She found Johnsy with wide open eyes staring at the covered window. Pull up the shade. I want to see, she ordered quietly. Sue obeyed. After the beating rain and fierce wind that blew through the night, there yet stood against the wall one ivy leaf. It was the last one on the vine. It was still dark green at the center, but its edges were colored with the yellow. It hung bravely from the branch about seven meters above the ground. It is the last one, said Johnsy. I thought it would surely fall during the night. I heard the wind. It will fall today, and I shall die at the same time. Dear, dear, said Sue, leaning her worn face toward the bed. Think of me if you won't think of yourself. What would I do? But Johnsy did not answer. The next morning, when it was light, Johnsy demanded that the window shade be raised. The ivy leaf was still there. Johnsy lay for a long time looking at it. And then she called to Sue, who was preparing chicken soup. I've been a bad girl, said Johnsy. Something has made that last leaf stay there to show me how bad I was. It is wrong to want to die. You may bring me a little soup now. An hour later, she said, Some day I hope to paint the Bay of Naples. Later in the day, the doctor came. And Sue talked to him in the hallway. Even chances, said the doctor. With good care, you'll win. And now I must see another case I have in your building. Behrman, his name is. Some kind of an artist, I believe. 
pneumonia, too. He is an old, weak man, and his case is severe. There's no hope for him, but he goes to the hospital today to ease his pain. The next day, the doctor said to Sue, She's out of danger. You won. Nutrition and care now. That's all. Later that day, Sue came to the bed where John C. lay and put one arm around her. I have something to tell you, White Mouse, she said. Mr. Behrman died of pneumonia today in the hospital. He was sick only two days. They found him the morning of the first day in his room downstairs, helpless with pain. His shoes and clothing were completely wet and icy cold. They could not imagine where he had been on such a terrible night. And then they found a lantern, still lighted, and they found a ladder that had been moved from its place, and art supplies and a painting board with green and yellow colors mixed on it. And look out the window, dear, at the last ivy leaf on the wall. Didn't you wonder why it never moved when the wind blew? Oh, darling, it is Behrman's masterpiece. He painted it there the night that the last leaf fell. <laughs>